how are you after a game if you've won that handshake? Is is like what? And if you lose, how's that post game? I, I try to keep it consistent. You know, I, I'm a big believer, Dan. I, I think there's football gods. I really believe it, and I think you have to respect the game of football. And if not, sooner or later, it come back. It will come back and get you. So even if I've got a lead and I feel like we've got the game in hand, I'm not big on let's just score as many points as we can score. Or if I feel like the game has gotten out of hand, I've been on the other end too a couple times and. You just feel like, okay, at some point you have to respect the game. Let's end the game. Let's move on and protect the kids, and we'll play again next week. Have you had a moment after a game you look back and regret? I've said a couple things to the media after a couple games that, you know, as a young coach I look back at and say I I probably could have handled that better. But that's one of the unique challenges, I think, from a football standpoint is emotions run high, right? I mean, we're, we're so intense for three and a half hours. You get in your locker room and you're talking to your team, and three minutes later you've got, 35, 40 mics in your face, and you're trying to gather yourself, you know? And that was one of the things, actually, I talked to Jim about, and he said, you know, sometimes you just got to get in the locker room and yeah. wait. Did you and, like Harbaugh? Uh, I appreciated Jim. <laughs> I really did. I appreciated Jim. I, I didn't like him when he beat us 41 to nothing. I yeah. remember that one time. But um, I have a great deal of respect for Jim, and uh, it'll be interesting to watch that dynamic at Michigan. Um Especially with what Ohio State's doing right now, what Michigan State's doing right now, I'm a Dan. If you don't know, I'm a huge college football fan. As much as I'm the head coach at USC, I love our game, and I love the pageantry of college football. I love the excitement. I love Saturdays and just the pride that that the student sections have. And so, Michigan football, in my opinion, is good for college football. We need them good again, and I think Jim's the right guy. Is he more suited to college than the pros? I don't know. I, that I don't know. He was doing pretty good in the pros. Yeah, man. I don't. You go to three straight NFC Championship games. That there's a lot of coaches that have never done that before. And people wondered about Pete Carroll and that personality because right. it, it is a college atmosphere. Sure, but it's it's transferred, translated with the NFL. Without a doubt, if you watch them practice, you watch them play. Um, they are really playing for one another. They're they're playing for the love of the game, and Pete has done a fantastic job of conveying that message. Now they're dealing with some contract stuff here the last couple of years that may have, may have tweaked out a little bit because all those guys were so young early on and now their contracts are coming up and guys are maneuvering and, you know, we're seeing Russell and Cam and uh, Earl Thomas and Marshawn and those guys getting their deals, Doug Baldwin. Um, but they're still playing. They're still playing the game. They're not working the game, which I think is important. If you had one scholarship and you had to decide between Andrew Luck and Ru- Russell Wilson, Oh boy! Knowing what you know now, wow. but you only got one scholarship. Um, I, I would take Andrew Luck, and not take nothing away from Russell. Um, I just saw Andrew up close and personal when he was at Stanford, and what he meant to that team. Um, you know, I think he's run into a little bit of a buzzsaw coming out of the other side here with with Denver and then with uh, with New England. Jim uh, Moore just gave the scholarship to Russell Wilson, just so you know. Well, then we'll, we'll play each other. <laughs> <laughs> but you knew Luck was – you played the position. Right. What is it that you saw that you went, okay, that's just different than, than you would see with the college quarterback? You know, I, first of all, he's a big human being. You don't, you don't realize Andrew's a big man, and he's a really good athlete, and he just has an innate feel for the game and his – his ability to throw the quick game, the intermediate game, the deep ball, uh, to get all of the guys around him to believe in what they're doing. And not that Russell doesn't. Russell just improvises a lot more. Uh, you know, If you watch Russell, he'll drop back, he'll play action pass, he'll run around, and then he'll make his play down the field. Andrew is very system-oriented. And as a coach, sometimes that makes you feel a little bit better when you know the guy's going to run what's coming. But <laughs> Russell beats you his own way and, and definitely pays dividends for him. Preseason ranked eighth. And uh, first game is home against Arkansas State. Come on, Arkansas State? I didn't schedule it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I'll say this. Our first two games um, before we play Stanford are really good for our football team. We're very young, and we're going to have to play a lot of true freshmen. And so we're going to have a chance to rotate a lot of guys early on in the season. Would you be rather be ranked in the top ten or surprise people and be maybe out – of the, the the spotlight, I don't think it matters. It Honestly, okay. it doesn't matter to me. You know, I, it's funny. We, we've got a first team meeting here today, and that's going to be one of the topics. It doesn't matter. It, preseason rankings are like a beauty pageant. It really doesn't. Well, matter. I hate them because you can get plugged into a top five or top ten position, 
And if you slip a little bit, it's hard to be 25th and jump into that top four at the end of the year with the playoffs. Right. And and that that's the rankings. The rankings, I like that we should be waiting until the end of October. Right. So we tr- get a true sense of how good somebody is right. or how bad they are. Right. The, with, the, with the playoff now, it has a little bit of a different significance. But I think a team can get there. I think a team can work its way up. Um, if you keep winning, sooner or later, if you don't lose, you're going to be up there. And so that's the challenge for everybody. All right. I saw this with Media Day. So I'm going to read the entire quote here by Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, somebody asked, you brought in a really good recruiting class. How difficult is it to recruit in this conference? So Steve says, well, I think the thing in our conference of what's going on right now, I said this earlier, I think the conference has really invested in recruiting. Sounds kind of odd to say, but everybody's got facilities. Everybody's got private planes. Everybody's got new gear. Everybody is doing something to stay on the cutting edge of what's going on in recruiting. For, uh, for us, yeah, sure, we do the same things. We have those same things. But at the end of the day, we fall right back in our rich history, tradition, our amazing university, being in Los Angeles, the number two media market in the world. You think the fact that uh, 11 national championships, six Heisman trophies, more NFL Hall of Famers than any other university. So there's a lot that we can hold on to, and I think that's very appealing to kids. We're not going to take the field in 13 different uniforms in 13 different games this fall. We're going to wear Cardinal and gold. You know what we wear. So I thought, okay, that's interesting. Here is the quote that I saw, the tweet for uh, ESPN.com. We're not going to take the field this year in 13 different uniforms in 13 games this year. Sark taking a low-key shot at Oregon. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Was that a shot at Oregon? No, no, it wasn't, quite honestly. Um, If you look at our conference, you look around the country. Every Saturday, every school is wearing a different uniform. I don't care if in our conference you look at Arizona, Arizona State, Oregon, Washington, Cal, uh, Oregon State. Outside of us, Stanford and UCLA, we're about the one, the three schools in our conference that don't wear a bunch of different uniforms, even though those two schools have alternate uniforms that they do wear. And maybe you can look at an Alabama and maybe a Texas as the other ones that just don't wear alternate uniforms and don't have a bunch of different uniforms. And so... My point being was everybody's trying to find a niche to to get the, to make their school look attractive to a, to a 17, 18 year old kid. That's not our niche. Our niche is our history and our tradition. And so that's what we lean on. And that was the point I was trying to make that don't get fooled that we're going to try to go into another niche here and a niche that's, that's not a strength of ours. The uniforms are the strength of our uniforms are the tradition of them. Not that we're going to come out in seven different or 13 different uniforms every Saturday. You never thought Saturday. about giving maybe a different options there? We've talked about it. Um, but really, if we ever did it, Dan, it would be maybe for one game a year um, just as a and have a tribute to something. Um, but not not every not to wear three different helmets or four different helmets. I did that at the University of Washington because I felt like we needed to do it. We had four different helmets at the University of Washington. We had four different colored pants. We had four different colored jerseys. But – at USC, I don't feel like we need to do that. So you play to your strengths, and you try to do the best you can do to recruit the best kids you can get. More likely to change USC's uniforms or the Song Girls outfits? <laughs> I think the Song Girls ha- probably have more subtle changes than our oh, uniforms. Oh, they do? Yeah, I like, think so. That might be a better it, it, recruiting tool than it, the rich tradition of <laughs> USC there. You might be right. Um, your son went to SC, didn't he? Yes, he did. Why? Was it the song I, girls? No, I think he walked on campus one day <laughs> and he called me. He he didn't even get through the tour. He called me. He said, Dad, I want to come here. And I go, Really? I said, What what have you seen? He goes, oh, I'm just walking on campus. And I went, Oh, okay. I, yeah. I, I get it. There. Right. Um, so you're not no no uh, changes with the uniforms this year. No. It'll stay that same. That's but do you same. do do you have kids who say, Coach, why can't we change? Why can't of we have course. some fun with it? Of course they do. They want to have some fun with it. And so that's why. Like Pat and I have the discussion at the end of every year. Is this something we want to do? Is this something we not want to do? Um, we've looked at cleats. We've looked at gloves. We've looked at different things. Is there an alternate uniform maybe we could do here or there? Um, we just haven't gotten to that point. You know, we're, we're, Again, I know what we're going to wear Saturday, September 5th when we take the field. We're going to have cardinal helmets, cardinal jerseys, gold pants, black socks, and black cleats. And it's going to be the same the next week against Idaho and the same the next week against Stanford. Uh, one of the Danettes has a question. Yes, he Coach, we're thinking about going to uh, USC at Notre Dame this season. Which sideline do you expect Dan to be standing on? I expect him to be on the SC sideline. His daughter comes to school with us. You do? Yeah. 
What sideline are you going to be well, on? Well, Notre Dame recruited me. Oh, they did? Yeah. Did you go there? They didn't recruit me that hard. Well, then. That's <laughs> <laughs> why I tell Digger Phelps, you're a terrible coach. You recruited me. And he said, I sent you a letter, and then I sent you a letter saying we're not interested in you. I said, right? okay, but you did send two letters to me. Right. That that constitutes recruiting. That means you've been recruited. He retracted a letter. He, he said, I apologize for sending that letter. I made a terrible mistake. We do not want Have to. you guys ever been to that game? Yes. The SC Notre yes. Dame game in yes. Notre Dame? It's yes. awesome. And it's a night game this year. It'll be it'll be a great atmosphere. Yeah. The night game part of it adds adds to that. But do you, if I said you can beat UCLA or beat Notre Dame? Whew. Both tall orders. Both both very, very Because both are, I both mean, are gonna Notre, be Dame's, very good Notre Dame's a top team. 10 team. Both are going to well. be very good football teams. And the thing about UCLA by the time we play them, their quarterback situation is going to be settled in pretty good. But and you have to make a pick here, Coach. I'm going to. I have the power to pencil in a W. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, right. This is a guaranteed win. You're going to beat UCLA or Notre Dame. I've got the W right there, ready to write it by. Uh, I, I'm not going to make that call, Dan. <laughs> I've been on. I've been on air with you too many times. I know. Well, I think the last time I was on air with you was Ron Burgundy asking me similar questions. So. <laughs> 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 oh, that's right. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. I yes. don't know if you remember the sound bite coming in right before I the guy that the guy that was on air before me. I'm not going to repeat it, but <laughs> wait, I don't remember so that. Ron Burgundy's on with you. Yes, yes, yes. And <laughs> Ron and Will start getting into an argument on air about SC and who would who would kick whose ass. Oh, okay. right. I don't know if you remember that, yeah. but right before me, you had a caller call in. Yeah. And. I don't know if these guys were prepared for the 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 bleeps of what was what, what was said right literally before. Do you I took remember there. that? Do you guys don't? Paulie? Yeah, Ron dropped a couple. He, oh, Ron Burgundy <laughs> yeah. did. But but the caller <laughs> teased him into it. Yes. It, oh, oh okay. I, just like coach, I can't repeat it. But Will yeah. Farrell, does he go to practice? Hey, he's around. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Who else goes? Because uh, Snoop's now got his son at UCLA. Yeah, what happened with that? You just got to make business decisions, you know? And Snoop understood. Dr. Dre's around quite a bit. Now it's pretty cool with his movie coming yeah. out and his new soundtrack. That's Do you talk to Dr. or Dre? or I, He goes by Dre now, but, oh, okay. you know, I grew up as, with Dr. Do you Dr. call him Dre. billionaire? What was, a cool, what was a cool moment last year? So Dr. Dre, I mean, we're talking Dr. Dre. He's on the sidelines with the president of our university, Max Nikias. <laughs> I don't know if Max has ever listened to one song from NWA in his life, right? Yeah. So... Yeah. <laughs> Juju Smith catches a touchdown pass, a true freshman from Long Beach Poly, and he's jogging off the field. He's just done high five and everybody. And he turns and he looks, and there's Dr. Dre. So he takes his helmet off, stops, and he goes, Can you take a picture of us? And takes After a picture. Scored a yeah, just, and on the sideline, <laughs> takes a picture with, with, with Dre, and it blows up everywhere. So we're, we're pretty lucky. Had Adam Sandler around last year, so we're pretty fortunate. Well, good luck against Arkansas State. Great to see you again, and uh, thanks for joining us. We thanks, appreciate guys. It. Appreciate it. Steve Sarkeesian, USC head coach. They open up against Arkansas State on September 5th.